the Joe Rogan experience. So the real challenge here is how do we find a way that means the vast amount, so the 6.5 billion people who are not rich can actually get a great living by the end of the century. And we can also fix climate change. And that's only going to happen if we find the technological breakthroughs, not by telling everyone, I'm sorry, could you do with less? Not mm -hmm. only is that not going to win any elections in the long run, but it's also just not going to be possible to convince China, India, Africa to do that. Now, what about the impact on climate change and natural storms, hurricanes yep. and the like? Like, How much are they increasing? How much is the severity of them increasing? Because that's a big yep. point of confusion for yes. people. I've heard... I've heard multiple people say that those storms are worse than ever and more frequent than ever. And then I've heard people say, no, they're actually less frequent than ever, but stronger. I've even heard people say, no, 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 they're more frequent and less strong. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know no. what's going on. No. So if the, the biggest point on this, I think, is they're certainly much stronger on TV. Right. I mean, you hear much, much more about them because well, they're sells. such great. They're such great stories. Yeah, they absolutely yeah. they sell. But if you actually look at the data, we cannot tell right now. So that's that's the conclusion from the uh, from the government agencies of the U.S. as well. We can't still tell that there is a fingerprint from climate change on hurricanes. We can't. So no, we can't. Why can't we? Because there is such a natural variability that you can't see, oh, this increase or this decrease is because of global warming. Is there an if you, increase trend currently? So, n well, so in the 1960s, sorry, in the 1970s and 80s, there was a lull in hurricanes that hit the U.S. That was also when satellite coverage started. So much of what you see now is if you start from the 1970s or 1980s, there is an increase for the U.S. Uh, but that's probably... Uh, uh, spurious, because if you go back in the 1950s and 1960s, there was actually just as many hurricanes. So what you do, and this is by far the best estimate, so I actually have that, I brought that with me. Uh, if you take a look at uh, uh, slide four on A, in the A file, uh, there we see, if you look at the number of hurricanes that have hit the U.S., because remember, we don't know about the hurricanes that we couldn't see uh, back when we didn't have satellites. Right. Now we see them because we have satellites, but that, that's obviously the wrong way to, counter, uh, to count. So if you just look at the hurricanes that landfall on the U.S., you get this graph. Mm. Uh, and so since this is 19 from 1900 to 2022. Yeah, so 2022 is obviously not done, but it's probably right. done. And it looks... Um, incredibly similar. It's actually slightly decreasing. This is not significant. Slightly decreasing from 2008. So, <clears throat> sorry. Or no, from 2004, so from, from rather. From 19, if you try to put in the best line, as you can see, that's the dotted red line, mm -hmm. you actually have a slightly decreasing line. So oh, I see. They I see the overall, be, the average. Yeah, the overall average used to be uh, you know, more like two hurricanes per season. What the and hell? that's down to 1.6 or something. Sorry. What the hell was going on in 1980? It looks like 86. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was going to pull up a... Uh, this is a contradicting chart, though. Um, okay. Hit me with it. It specifies, though, North Atlantic, which this does not. Okay. So North Atlantic is where the predominant amount of hurricanes exist in the United States. Is that correct? Or South Atlantic? It's South Atlantic, so North Atlantic would have less of them because well, the water's cold. Northern Hemisphere, I believe, is not just it's not North compared to the United States. It's North versus South Hemisphere. Oh, okay, okay. Why Atlantic hurricanes are getting stronger faster than other storms? Yeah. So this Hurricane Ian, two hundred sixty-four percent since nineteen eighty mm. compared to the globe, according to this chart. Percentage yes. of tropical cyclone activity with major intensity. So major intensity indicates that the sustained wind speeds reach a category three yeah. level or higher. So yep. it seems like there's more of them. Yes, and notice what that happens. It starts in 1980, and that's why you know when you when you do these numbers, it's very easy to get this number uh, this result if you start in 1980 when they were much lower. If I can just show you the other graph again, because I showed you for all of the hurricanes, but we also have uh, if you take the next slide uh, for uh, that's just the strong hurricane. So that's exactly the same as what you just showed, uh, category three and and uh, uh, and uh, higher. And what you see here again is that there are fewer hurricanes, not not more hurricanes, hitting the U.S. today than there used to be back in, in that, the early part of the Is this saying there's only one per year? or Yes. That doesn't feel like that's right, though. This is one major hurricane landfalling 
each year. Yeah. Is that usually what we get? And so if you go all the way back to 2006, which is that year we were talking about, it looks like there was four. Yeah. So that, so from that, 80, so when you're looking at that major- That was 2005, in, that was uh, Hurricane Katrina and all these others. Okay. So yeah. when you're looking at that other chart that shows the increase from 1980, see with 1980, it's just, all those years, it's just one, and then it gets up to four in 2006, and that's a rough year. So all that factors into the average, and that kicks the average up to 264%. Yes. But a lot of it is from 2006. But and when and we, a lot of it is because you just you know go from a period when there was a relative lull mm -hmm. to a period when it's back up. On these so, charts, what is it differentiating as major or not major? Because like, mm -hmm. then we get to like, we almost got through all the names I thought a couple years ago. So y yes, sorry. Uh, so major is category three, but these all landfalling. Remember, a lot of hurricanes are not landfalling. So the reason why we run out of names is because they, they're, we are able to see a lot more of them. Hmm. So they actually estimate, this is a reanalysis uh, by NOAA and all those guys. Um, so they actually found that we now name about four storms more than we would have named in the early 2000s every year. Mm. Because we've just become better at you know notice. Oh, there was a hurricane, and then it uh, dropped uh, dropped off. Right, because they don't hit. They but don't. Not only because they don't hit, but typically they're just one or two days. Uh, and, and what's the and percentage of them that actually hit? The, the 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 problem is like when they get strong enough on the ocean that they yep. can carry over onto the land and devastate the land. So the the reason why I'm looking at landfall is because in the early part of last century. You would have. It's very likely that someone would have noticed a landfalling hurricane anywhere in the U.S. But if it's out in the middle of nowhere, there's a very good chance nobody would have noticed. Actually, you can see in the in the data that when uh, the uh, the uh, Panama Canal opened, suddenly uh, you know ships started going a different route. So there was a big part of the Atlantic that they no longer traversed, and so we never. So you know the number of hurricanes dropped in those areas because you, know, you need it to have sort of a ship to be out there and noticing. That's why mm. it's a very, very bad way to look at this if you just look at how many hurricanes do we know about because we just know about a lot more now. So that's from satellite radar. And that was what year they started implementing satellite? Um, this is about 1980. 1980. Okay. Yeah. So that's when – okay. So, so it's again, not clear but, but, but is your what you're point, saying. The, your point was to basically say – what people will, are worried about is that there's going to be a lot more hurricanes. Yes. Well, actually, so the best evidence seems to indicate, as, uh, that was one of the points that you said, that there will probably be fewer hurricanes, but they will be stronger. And overall, stronger is worse than fewer is better, which means that overall, there will be slightly more damage. Right. So global warming is bad. That's you know, one of the many things that you know, will actually be worse with global warming. But it's not terribly bad. It's somewhat worse. And, of course, at the same time, we're getting much better at dealing with this impact. What you're actually seeing, if you look at the total cost, for instance, on, on, uh, on, on hurricane impacts and all kinds of climate impacts, it's actually going down, not up, in percent, uh, in percent of GDP. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we now know we have much better prediction. We know how to you know, uh, deal with these things. For instance, get uh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff that can be moved. We get it out of harm's way. So every time there's a hurricane, you know, all, all uh, trucks will uh, go to other states, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of things that don't get damaged. We can also build better, as you talked about, uh, with houses and so on. So we have a lot of ways to reduce this. But what is happening is it'll reduce slightly less fast because of global warming. Again, not the end of the world, but a problem. So the fear mongering would have you terrified about a future that's impossible to fix yes. and that we're doomed. Yep. And you, you're, you're simply saying it is a problem, but it's not yes. our biggest problem. It's, it's, it's a problem in the sense that it slows down progress. Right? And if I can just, you know, because people talk a lot about uh, uh, the fact that we won't have enough food either. Uh, I have I have another slide um, on in the B file and uh, uh, God I need glasses in number six. I, Nineteen. I, sorry, I was just googling this. Uh, 2020 it says 11 hurricanes made it to land. Here, a total of 11 named storms made landfall in the United States, breaking the previous record of nine in 1916. Sorry, 11. Named storms or six of these were storms struck the United States. That's hurricane intensity. 
They were talking about category three and above. That was that. That was just this one though. Right. His chart, which was this. Is it all hurricanes? This is major hurricanes. You need what to is go a, back. So yeah. category one. But even what's this? the worst? This, is category one the worst or four? No, this is four is the worst, right? Five, five is, is the worst. The worst yeah. This just says four hurricanes hit U.S. and four, and then when I Google it, it says there's at least six, if not eleven. Yeah, that's. I mean, this this is period literature. Uh, I have no doubt, and the, the updates are for the guy. This is uh, 2020, Jamie? It. Yeah, I just was trying to pick one year. Yeah, 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 no, that's all, great. You know? um, mm. uh, and these, and the one that, this was saying they're intensifying. This says that, like, since 1950, only uh, nine Category 4 hurricanes have main, hit the mainland, but six of those were in the last five years. Whoa. That seems like a problem. That's a big problem. No, it's just... Doesn't that seem like a big problem? Me seeing that, I would see why people would freak out. <laughs> yeah, and this is so we we can't sit here and do period research in uh, in real time. Uh, I'm 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 right, showing, but you do but, need contradicting. Yes. Oh no no statements. no, absolutely. But I am saying. That uh, so I'm I'm happy to say that we should uh, so there's very little uh, four and five hurricanes that's why the uh, the major and that was also why the other graph uh, uh, showed the change in uh, in um, uh, in three three four and five. Can you five. go back to that again, please, yep. for a second? Look at that, man. Andrew was even more powerful than Ian in '92. That was a uh, hundred and sixty-five mile an hour. What's the fucking strongest one that we've ever had? Is that all of them? That we've had during the last, uh, so that's the last 50 the years? 50 years, yeah. I think yeah, when that was like 92, I think So Ian was. was the strongest, or Andrew, excuse me, was the strongest. That was 165. Katrina's hmm. not even on this list. No. Wow. Why isn't Katrina on the list? I don't know. That was a big one, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, wasn't that Hurricane 3? Category it 3? Been. It could have just been yep. big and long and just lasted for yep. a long time. Mm, instead of... Right. The devastation was big because of where it hit. Yes. Wow. That also, if, if you look at the major that. hurricanes, uh, uh, we had a, the biggest drought ever. So there were 11 years where there were no major hurricane that hit the mm. U.S. recently. Uh, I don't know if you noticed. That was when nobody talked about hurricanes. And then, of course, the, the hurricanes came back. And then we said, oh, see, global warming again. So, this is how we're not being well served with this kind of conversation. What is your book so, called? False Alarm? False Alarm, yeah. Cause, Do you have that, it? Uh, no, I don't have one yet. Here. Thank you very much. Um, I don't. I wouldn't say false alarm. I would say there's a lot of other shit to be worried about as yes. well. Yes, but that's, it is. But it that's, also that's, seems to be a problem. That's the other book I brought you. Prioritizing development. Yes. Ah, see. So see. this is this is basically this is what my day job really is, uh, because as, as as you also know, uh, and as we talked a little bit about. So look, there is a lot of problems in the world, and for most people, so rich people who are you know, well ensconced in their lives and they, you know, they don't have to worry about their kids dying from uh, infectious diseases or, or you know, not having enough food, all that kind of stuff. They clearly can worry about what the temperature is going to be in 100 years. But for most of the planet's population, so you know, the 6.5 billion people here, they actually worry about their kids might die tonight. They might not have enough food. They have terrible education. There are all kinds of other t terrible things. You know, almost a billion people are extremely poor. So in terms so, of the overall impact on human health and life, elevating the economy is the most important step that people can take. It's certainly a very important part of it. And again, when we – sorry, if I could just show you the, the one on malnutrition, the, uh, the slide uh, from the B set, uh, stack, number six. Sorry. So what I just want to show you was that malnutrition has come down dramatically. And again, what you see here is so this is the number of death uh, uh, from uh, so from kids that are less than five years old. Um, and again, this is very similar to the other chart, yes, but a little bit exactly. of a difference. The yes. difference between with climate change and without climate change. Without climate change is only slightly lower, but the overall trend is much, much, much lower than it was in 1990. Yeah. And this is because we're getting better at you know making agriculture. Uh, this is what we talked mm. about before. They're much better in India. They're much better everywhere. And so the we overall net become, benefit is positive. We're, we're, we're moving towards a world that's going to be much better. So these guys that are protesting think it's the end of the world. No, it's not. It's a world that's going to be much better. But they're right in saying that climate is one problem. And we should definitely think about how we fix that. But we should also remember a large part of this is how do we fix all the other problems?